Welcome back to class. Uh, a little while ago, I had an assignment to do a schematic on your kitchen sink. And the assignment said to draw a, a schematic to the perimeter of your home. And I did that assignment after having a lecture where I drew a rough schematic of a washer and dryer. I think I just used a dryer. And all I really wanted in that assignment was, I wanted a couple things. I wanted to see where, where your minds were on schematic, because I think that's a super important thing. And, but I was trying to lay a foundation for something more. The, what I want to do is take you through my schematic as I have it right now. And uh, we've got, got the perimeter of the house defined with this square. And remember, I'm going to say this like 50 times, schematics do not look like or do not have to look like what the, uh, they don't graphically necessarily have to look like how your house looks. So this square right here, all it means is there's a house and that's the perimeter of it. The house might not take a shape like this, could be round, oval, triangle, I don't care. It's just saying that this line represents the outside of your house. And just because the washer and the dryer is over here on the left and we've got water meter over here, it does not mean that the washer and dryer is physically located the left upper part of my floor plan. It has nothing to do with that, right? So a schematic is just showing relationship, trying to show the entire system. And those are my words. I don't know if there's an engineering term behind when when the engineers are, are taught to draw schematically but to me it really helps to think like that and i think that's pretty how pretty much how they they convey it and i'm not necessarily done with my schematic i want to think through it a little bit more but i want to take you through it and so the first thing i drew was i decided in this house we have a washer dryer stack combo and there's a, a washer on top uh, excuse me a washer on the bottom dryer on the top and uh, in this fictitious house, so I thought, okay, I'm just going to say, take my advice previously and what, what touches it? I want to diagram this to the outside of the house. And so what, what does my wash and dryer touch? And the first thing that came to my mind was the exhaust duct. All right, so I got uh, these, these uh, symbols, excuse me, drawing symbols. And uh, out of a, a drawing, and I pasted them here, and I'll, I'll share this document with you at some point in time. But ours, it goes through a wall down, and then it goes out through the floor. But because it does not matter how it's specifically routed, all I drew was schematically it's going to that line. And what does that line mean? Perimeter of the house. So the exhaust duct goes to the perimeter of the house. And I, I need to go do some other things like diagram in the size, but I haven't done that yet. So I haven't done any sizing yet. I haven't decided whether we want to go to that level of uh, trying to size. Really, I just want people to understand schematics, not necessarily be a designer. And there's a bigger picture of what I want you to understand as well. So eh, I haven't decided yet, but I want to take you through it. So I got my washer and dryer stack combo and I thought, okay, that goes there, out to the building, out to the edge of the uh, home. thought, okay, it needs an electrical outlet. And I haven't put voltages or, or uh, amperage on this, just kept it simple. But my washer dryer, it has an outlet very close by. And so the it's going to have a home run. That little symbol right there means home run to the electrical panel. So I drew the electrical panel down here and the electrical panel. So that little line right there means there's a circuit coming out of the electrical panel. There's a wiring circuit coming out of the electrical panel feeding this outlet. And the electrical panel, what does it touch? Well, it touches the elect, it goes all the way to the meter panel. So I, I wrote the meter panel on the outside of the house. And so I cheated a little bit thinking, okay, well that's 
it's attached to the outside of my house, but it's on the outside. If I wanted to keep going, that would go out to uh, the uh, the transformer and uh, the transformer pad out there. Anyways, so I drew that and I drew that and I drew that and it, and these little lines, this little arrow off saying going to the electrical panel means that that and this are connected, even though there's not a physical line between it. Uh, schematically, it means that they're connected. And because this little thing shows over to the electrical meter, that's saying, okay, that's the, and the symbol for that came from this right here, my electrical meter location. Great, so I got that far. I started thinking, okay, well, that kind of completes two two runs or, or two, two uh, systems. And so let's look at the, what the washer and dryer combo has now. Well, it has a drain pan, and I got that from over here. I just copied that guy right there. Drain pan and T-trap, and P-trap, excuse me. So I know that's there. I know there's a, this is a clean-out symbol right there. See the clean-out? And I know that this waste line right here, I used a solid line because the sewer and above grade sewer is solid on my on my uh, symbols so it's a solid line and it's above grade and uh, there's a vent through the roof oh you know what that right there shoot I just found an error that's why this thing's not done that should be that that should be this vent. Okay, got it. So I got my vent through the roof, VTR. And I'm, I'm, I think that my vent through the roof works for this line as well, because I'm pretty sure the, uh, the stack is connected. So I think there's only one. And I have the vent through the roof higher than that. I think that's correct. I'm going to have to think through that a little bit. But my washer-dryer combo has another drain uh, and then another trap. And then it connects to the same line that the, um, the drain pan line goes to. So this drain pan line and, the, and, the, and they connect and then they go out to the sewer. All right, got got to that point. Said okay, that's going there. Thought okay, well, my washer dryer combo it has gas to it, so I drew the gas line coming in, and it comes from a meter. So I drew the gas like this over there, and what does the gas meter have? Well, what it, what there's a valve, and so I used I used this symbol right. I use this one right here. There's a valve on my gas line right by the washer dryer. So I got my gas. Now I started thinking through water. So I need cold and hot water going to the washer and dryer. So I used symbols again to draw the line. Domestic cold has one dash in it. So here's my domestic cold and tracing that out to the perimeter of the house. It goes through a PRV and uh, a valve, an isolation valve, and then eventually goes to the meter and the meter's out, the out by the street. So it's outside the perimeter of my house here. And so when I started drawing this thing, I go, okay, well, the reality is my hot water, my hot water heater is connected to my, uh, my washer dryer and the hot water line has a valve right below the right before the uh, and I'm wondering whether I need to switch these to like hose bib looking valves because uh, the has that hose going to the washer dryer and maybe this doesn't connect I got to think through that a little bit more maybe that's how I want to show this but uh, I think it makes sense that there for schematically there is a hot water line going here with the valve isolation valve and there's cold water going to this with a, each of them are isolated the hot water going back to this 
so I stole a uh, oh there it is the water heater water heater symbol and so I started diagramming the water heater because that's dependent upon this whole thing so the hot water comes in and there's an isolation valve on the supply line and there is water coming in so this is the from the meter this is my my fresh water coming in my potable water and it, it's also the same it's connected to the same line as the domestic cold to the washer and dryer and it's got an isolation valve on it as I thought through my water heater some more because it's connected we've got the gas line that uh, goes to my water heater and it's connected to the same gas line that goes to the dryer and it's somewhere over here I don't know where it is it doesn't matter it's just diagramming that they are the same uh, same I don't know what the right word is uh, the same gas that goes to the washer and dryer is the same gas that goes to my water heater and my gas meters on the outside of the house right so then I, I realized I start to draw all this stuff and uh, I needed another room so I needed to di diagram well this is really the mechanical room and I've got more stuff in the mechanical room than this but for the schematic which I'm trying to define that's all I'm going to put in the water in the mechanical room so I realized looking at my water heater I know that we have a pressure relief valve Got this little pressure relief valve right here and it goes it it uh, dead ends in the air but it's above a drain and the drain I know has a clean out right over by there and I know the drain has a vent through the roof and I know that that drain is below grade so the the waste line is below grade and it eventually all connects to the same point somewhere uh, with the same line that uh, comes off my washer and dryer actually just my my washer right sorry and so it goes out to the sewer you start thinking through like oh hey maybe, maybe what do, what else do i have in here did I, did I get everything i think i just described everything but what i was hoping to show in my in the assignment that i gave you guys was that how connected the different I'm going to say I'm going to use systems and subsystems how connected they are in order to get something simple to work so the simplicity of a washer and dryer you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or I don't know RC Willie whatever go buy one and does it work it's a it's a system in itself it has like like I was saying in the previous lecture it has an HMI it has a human machine interface that has a whole bunch of inner workings and and uh, different I'm sure it has different valves and actuators and things and all kinds of motors and so the point it we could diagram out what's inside here but no I'm just gonna keep it simple that's my washer dryer stack combo all right and but that by itself doesn't work by itself it, it I mean you could get it to turn on if you have a power source, but it still doesn't do everything it's supposed to do. And so it doesn't function without a bunch of other subsystems. Well, it needs a plumbing subsystem. Drain waste vent plums, plumbing uh, subsystem needs a gas subsystem, needs domestic water, hot and cold. In order to get hot water, you need a hot water heater of some type. And you need, in order to make this work, you need an electrical pan, uh, service. Uh, and so you start to look at the connectivity of everything in your home and it's sort of a bigger picture when you can see the schematic of how things are connected to each other and how dependent they are on one another. So we're going to get into this down the road, this idea of equipment, mechanical equipment, system, subsystem. And so I just want to take you through a little exercise here to wet. To, to maybe set the table a little bit you have this washer and dryer and does it work by itself no 
It does not work by itself. It needs things, needs certain things. Well, what needs to work before this washer dryer works? Well, we could say that it des definitely needs power. That needs to be done before. It needs gas that needs to be done before. It needs hot and cold water to be done before this will work. It needs a drain system done before it will work. So as we think through our system, this is the last thing that we really are going to make work in the whole system. Everything else has to work prior to that. And so if we, if we call this the entire washer dryer stack combo system, the actual washer and dryer is the last thing that really would need to be there in order to make it work. So as you think through your kitchen sink uh, schematic, what does it touch? How many systems are needed in order for your kitchen sink to work? What touches what? What, do, what does, where did your, your uh, kitchen sink get its hot water from? Where does the water go? Is that the only thing that that pipe is connected to is the sink? So imagine that your hot water, I mean, your, your kitchen sink might have some of the same uh, components or subsystems in it as I have here. So I was wanting to take you through it. And there's a couple points that I wanted to share. There's three different systems that I count, right? We can't, uh, electrical, water, gas. There's three, there's three services that need to work in order for my washer and dryer combo to function correctly. No, four, four, sorry. Sewer as well. So there's four of them that need to work. Now, does it need the HVAC? Hmm, that's a good question. Not really. It could function without the HVAC furnace running. Uh, the furnace could be down and this, this thing could be working, but it does have duct work on it. So there is duct work here as my vent for my, my dryer. There is duct work for my water heater and there is a combustion air duct going into my mechanical room from the outside to be able to feed this this mechanical room with combustion air. And I didn't draw a, a, a diagram combustion air in the washer and dryer area because it takes air from the surrounding space. There is no combustion air coming from anywhere. It's just the surrounding space. And we can get into more of that. But how many systems, how many, how many things need to work in order for this washer dryer combo to work? There's four, right? I thought three, but four sewer, electrical, water, and gas. And they're very, they're very connected. Thanks for joining with me. See ya.